Hi, I'm Kevin Carnes. As your lead clerk and crop controller, I'm committed to ensuring you have helpful and easy to access service from the clerk's office. This how-to seminar is designed to assist you in navigating your court services and Lee County's official records. You can attend these sessions in person or view them online at leeclerk.org. I hope this convenient service enhances your customer experience with my office. Hello, and welcome to your Lee County Clerk of Court and Comptroller's Office How-To Seminar on Applying for a Passport. My name is Yesenia Williams. I am the Community Relations Manager for your Lee County Clerk of Court and Comptroller's Office, and I'm delighted to go over this information with you today. A brief overview of our webinar, we're going to talk about uh, some general information regarding passports, including where and how you can apply for one, the requirements associated with obtaining a passport, We'll also go over the requirements and the process for obtaining a passport for minors, some additional special circumstances and the forms that go along with those special circumstances, the process associated with renewals, uh, something called disaster recovery that is offered by the U.S. Department of State, and the associated fees as well as some other services um, offered by both your clerk's office and the U.S. Department of State. And finally, we'll go over some available resources and contacts. The Official and County Record Services Office is who facilitates the accepting of passports. Uh, we are located at 2115 Second Street on the second floor in downtown Fort Myers, the building pictured here on your left. We do have a satellite office located in Cape Coral at 1039 Southeast 9th Place on the second floor. At this time, Passport Services is not one of those um, services offered in the Cape. The contact number is 533-5000. Um, a brief overview of the service, services offered by that office. We assist the public with information on land, subdivision plats, and other recorded instruments. So we do have a document library for um, from when the county was first found back in 1887. We issue marriage licenses and perform marriage ceremonies. And we serve as an official passport acceptance agent for the U.S. Department of State, uh, which is what we're going to go over today. Some general information before we take a dive into the process itself. The clerk's office who's facilitating this presentation here for you today does serve as an acceptance agency for the U.S. Department of State. So this means that our role is to uh, accept the passport, but not process the passport itself. Um, we will not have any access to passport information after this application has been mailed from our office to the U.S. Department of State. The Department of State does state that it, it may take up to two weeks for applications to arrive by mail at a passport agency or center and up to two weeks for you to receive a completed passport in the mail after they print it. It's important that you consider that total time uh, it will take to receive your passport when you are booking travel. For passport status, we encourage you to visit the U.S. Department of State's website at travel.state.gov or contact the National Passport Information Center at 1-877-487-2778 or by email at npic at state.gov. So there are two different passports that you can apply for when applying for a passport. The first one is a passport book, pictured here. And the second one is a passport card, pictured here as well. The passport book is valid for all international travel. The passport card, however, is only valid for land or sea travel to Mexico, Canada, or the Caribbean. You are able to apply for both a passport book and a passport card in the same application. So if you're applying for a passport, you can do this in person in our office as we are a U.S. Um, a passport acceptance agent for the U.S. Department of State. So in order to be eligible to apply for a passport in our office in person, the following must be true. You must, it must be your first time um, applying for a passport. If you're a minor under the age of 16, if uh, the previous, your previous passport was lost or stolen, the previous passport was destroyed or damaged, your previous passport is five or more years expired, 
If it is less than that, then we, you would go through the renewal process, which we'll touch on later. But if it is more, uh, five or more years, then you can apply in person. If your previous passport was issued to you when you were under the age of 16, or if your previous passport was in a different name and you do not have legal documentation for that uh, name change. So if any of these are true, then you are able to apply for a passport in person. When applying for a passport, uh, you are required to provide both proof of identity and proof of citizenship. And we'll go over how you can prove each one of these individually. So uh, there are a few ways that you can prove your identity. Um, this um, proof must be presented in the form of the original document as well as a photocopy of both the front and back of the identification as well. So this can be proven by uh, providing your previous U.S. passport book or card, a valid driver's license, certificate of naturalization or citizenship with a photo, a U.S. military ID card, a government employee ID card, or a current valid foreign passport. If you have any of these, then this is uh, good enough to prove your identity when applying for a passport. Now, if you don't have one of those primary forms of identification, then um, there are some documentation, some documents that you can show as secondary identity documents. Um, if you uh, do opt with to do the secondary identity documents because you don't have the primary, then you must present at least two of these documents. So it can be a state issued ID card, an expired driver's license, a school ID card, or a work ID card. So you would need to provide two of these documents if you do not have any of the primary forms of identification. Supplemental ID uh, documentation. This documentation can be provided as supporting evidence to your uh, secondary documentation. Um, but it is not acceptable alone as proof of ID. So again, the supplemental ID uh, document is to the secondary. So you can either do two of the secondary that I just mentioned or a secondary and a supplemental. And this can be voter registration cards, social securities, loan, learner's permit, club membership cards, credit cards, Medicare, Medicare or other health insurance card, or an expired identity document. If you are unable to provide evidence of your identity with any of what I just mentioned, then you must appear with an identifying witness who must be a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or permanent resident. They must have known you for at least two years. They must have documentary proof of their identity by proving, um, showing one of the documents that I mentioned earlier. And they must sign an affidavit or a sworn statement in front of the clerk that is accepting um, your application. It is imperative to provide any supplemental documentation that you have regarding your identity. Anything else you have would be beneficial in addition to the identifying witness. So that seals up identity and how you can prove identity and brings us to how uh, you can prove citizenship. So for adults to prove citizenship, you can either provide your previous passport book or card a certified copy of your birth certificate, and it must have a raised seal as well as your parents' names on there, a certificate of naturalization, or a report, a report of birth abroad, and this would be using forms FS-240 and DS-1350, and you must present the original plus a copy. Uh, the forms that I do mention in this presentation are all U.S. Department of State forms. By the way, I'll touch a little bit more about that uh, on that later in the presentation. Um, but for adults, these are ways that you can prove uh, citizenship. When it comes to minors, there are two tiers. Uh, minors who are between the ages of 16 and 17 years of age are treated similarly to adults. So when it comes to fees, proving identity and citizenship, the requirements to an adult are the same. The difference is something called parental awareness evidence. Um, that is a requirement. This evidence must be an original or certified physical copy. Photocopies or notarized copies are not acceptable. So what is parental evidence? Uh, there are two ways that you can comply with uh, parental awareness, excuse me. 
Uh, you can do either at least one legal parent or legal guardian can appear with you in person when you apply for the passport. The clerk accepting the application will ask the legal parent or legal guardian to sign the application, which is a form DS-11. And the legal guardian or parent must also bring a photocopy of their um, ID. Another way to comply with parental awareness is by submitting a signed note from your legal parent or legal guardian with a photocopy of their ID. They also need to submit proof. You would also need to submit proof that your legal parent or legal guardian is paying your application fee. Um, so for example, the parent or guardian's name is written on the check or money order. That's one way to prove that they are paying for um, your application fees. I do want to note that we may ask that uh, you submit a notarized uh, what's called statement on consent to issuance, and this is U.S. Department of State Form 3053 from your legal parent or guardian. Uh, in addition to what I just mentioned, the statement must be accompanied by a photocopy of that parent or guardian's ID front and back. Now, uh, passport for minors under the age of 16, the requirements are a little different. Uh, proof of citizenship is a component, proof of identity of the parents. Then the two new ones would be proof of parental relationship and consent of both parties. And this is in most, most cases. I'll go ahead and um, touch on each one of these individually. So proof of citizenship for a child um, if the minor was born to U.S. born citizen parents who do not have primary evidence of citizenship, then they will need evidence of the parent's citizenship, the applicant's foreign birth certificate, the parent's marriage certificate, if applicable, and a notarized affidavit from the citizen's parents showing their period of residence in the U.S. from the time of birth until the time of the applicant's birth. If the minor was born abroad to naturalized U.S. citizen parents who do not have primary evidence of citizenship, then we will need the applicant's foreign birth certificate, the parent's certificates of naturalization, the parent's marriage certificate, if applicable, and proof of legal entry into the U.S. for permanent residence. And this is for children under the age of 16. The next requirement is proof of parental relationship, again, under the age of 16. So to prove parental relationship, we must see either a U.S. birth certificate, a consular report of birth abroad, a foreign birth certificate, or a, diver a divorce or custody decree. That's, um, those are the documents that you can provide in order to prove parental relationship if the minor is under the age of 16. The final component when it comes to minors under the age of 16 is something called parental consent. So both parents are required to appear in person with the minor. Um, the only exception is the following. So if one parent appears, uh, that's fine, but the other parent would need to comply a complete U.S. Department of State Form 3053, which is the Statement of Consent Form, and I'll talk a little bit more about that Statement of Consent Form on the next slide. Uh, again, both parents must appear unless you have sole legal authority over that child. If there is a court order or only one parent listed on the birth certificate, that's an exception. Or if you are unable to locate the other parent, then you must submit the other form we're going to talk on the next slide about, which is Florida Depart um, U.S. Department of State Form 5525, which is Statement of Exigent or Special Family Circumstances. So for um, Form DS-3053, Statement of Consent, the form must be brought in and it must be at least less than 90 days old. It must have been signed in the presence of a notary and it must be submitted with a copy of both the front and back of the non-applying parent's ID. So this is um, if the one parent will need to appear, the other parent will need to fill out or complete uh, the Statement of Consent form. In the instance that you are unable to locate the other parent, then Form DS-5525 is what applies to you. It is a statement of exigent or special family circumstances. It's imperative that you complete this form with as much detail as possible. 
There is no guarantee that the U.S. Department of State will accept the form once it is sent to them. They may contact you and still require you to uh, you as the applying parent to still obtain a court order. Again, this is strictly for under the age of 16. Some additional forms for special circumstances that I want to touch on is Form DS-64, and this is a statement regarding a lost or stolen passport, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Form DS-5504 is application for a U.S. passport correction or name change within one year of passport issu issuance. So if you obtained your passport and after obtaining that passport a few months later, let's say you got married and changed your name, then this form would apply to you. So if you changed your name less than one year since your most recent passport, the identifying information on your U.S. passport was printed incorrectly, or if your U.S. <clears throat> excuse me, your most recent U.S. passport was limited to two years or less for reasons other than multiple losses or seriously or a seriously damaged passport. There is no fee required for uh, getting a replacement passport, um, but it must be submitted to the U.S. Department of State through the mail. When it comes to renewals, the process is slightly different. This is not something that we can assist you with in person in our office as a passport acceptance agency for the U.S. Department of State. However, we can review the form for you if you would like us to ensure uh, or assist you with ensuring that all of the information you have on the applicant application is accurate and you're not missing anything before you send it off to the U.S. Department of State. Um, so for renewals, you would use form DS-82 and you can only do renewals if you can um, all of the following apply to you. So if you're able to produce your previous passport, if that previous passport is not destroyed or damaged, if it was issued to you when you were 16 years of age or older, if it is not more than five years expired, or if, if your name has changed and you have legal documentation of the name change, whether it, that be through a marriage license or the court order. So if either, if all of these apply to you, minus the last one with the marriage license, that's um, an exception, then you are able to apply for a passport renewal through the mail. Disaster recovery. So federal law does state that the president working with the governor of a state may waive U.S. passport application fees and file search fees for those who lost their U.S. passport as a result of a major disaster. So if you did lose your passport or a book or passport card as a result of one of the disasters that are listed on the U.S. Department of State's website, then you are able to obtain a replacement passport by submitting um, forms DS-5504, which is a replacement passport form, and form DS-64 for a lost or stolen passport. You must submit both of this, these forms in addition to a new photo. To submit your application, you can mail both of these forms to the addresses listed on the U.S. Department of State's form uh, DS-5504 on page two. Uh, again, you'll have to submit both forms with a new passport photo through the mail to the U.S. Department of State. The time it takes to receive your passport does change throughout the year, so we encourage you to visit their website to see how long it may take for you to receive your passport. If you do have urgent international tra travel, you may be eligible to apply for passport in, per in person at a passport agency or center. Uh, please go to the U.S. Department of State's Passport Agency and Center page for more information on this. Uh, an example here of a disaster that may apply to you was your uh, Hurricane Ian in 2022. Um, you do have, if you, your passport was uh, damaged through that disaster, then you are able to apply for a replacement through September 28, 2025. This is just a snippet of our website. Uh, you can visit our passport page at leeclerk.org forward slash passports. We do have a link to the Department of State on there, including the Department of State um, forms page. Uh, because all of the forms that I've mentioned uh, in this presentation are developed by the U.S. Department of State, they are only available in English. So if you do need assistance with translation, we do encourage you to come to our office with a translator. Uh, again, because all of these forms are in English, 
Um, so please visit their website for the most updated version of their forms. We also have the forms available in our office. When it comes to passport photos, this is a requirement when submitting your application. Um, you are able to obtain your photo at a pharmacy or uh, anywhere else that does provide passport photo services. But if you do want the comfort of knowing that your photo does meet the necessary requirements, because there are requirements as outlined by the U.S. Department of State, our office does offer um, photo services for a nominal fee. So when you come and see us to apply for a passport, we can also take your photo and we can make sure that it does meet those necessary requirements. Um, just a brief overview of what those requirements are. The photo must be in color with a white background. The size of requirement is two by two inches. It must be you alone in the photo. The photo must have been taken within the last six months with a, front, a full front view of your face and a neutral facial expression. No glasses or hat head coverings are allowed unless a signed statement is provided that it is for legitimate religious purposes. The fees associated with applying for a passport, there are two different uh, fees and they are paid to do to two different entities. So if you are applying for a passport and you are visiting us in person, the application fee itself is made payable to the US Department of State. So it's important that you come prepared um, with a check or money order made out to the U.S. Department of State, uh, State for the amount that applies to you. So at this time, if you're applying for a book for an adult, it's $130. Uh, this includes um, if you're between the ages of 16 and 17, because the fees are the same for adults and 16 and 17 year olds. For a minor under the age of 16, it is $100. A card is $30 for an adult and a minor is $15. And again, uh, you must bring either a personal check, cashier's check, or money order made payable to the U.S. Department of State for the application fee. The processing fee is different, and is that is collected by the Lee County Clerk of Courts. You are able to pay the processing fee through uh, personal check, money order, cashier's check, uh, cash or credit or debit card. Uh, that fee at this time is $35. For renewals, there are no processing fees associated with renewals because we are unable to process your application in person in our office. You can only do this through the mail directly through the U.S. Department of State, so your payment would have to be made payable to the U.S. Department of State. I do want to uh, mention that fees are subject to change, so for the most up-to-date information regarding fees, please visit our website at leeclerk.org forward slash fees. There are some... Uh, optional additional fees that are available to you if you are interested, some offered by the Department of State and some by the Clerk of the Courts. So the expedited service fee, this is a, a, an additional fee option that is available to you offered by the U.S. Department of State. Uh, this is to have your application expedited and processed quick, uh, quick, quicker, excuse me, by the U.S. Department of State. It is required if you are traveling within four weeks. Um, if you are have no travel plans or you're traveling way in advance, um, right now it is typically taking six to eight weeks um, to have for routine passport services. So if you need it quicker than that, then you may want to explore paying the $60 expedited service fee. Another fee offered by your uh, Lee County Clerk's Office is the expedited overnight delivery fee. So this is us delivering your application to the U.S. Department of State overnight. Um, the cost for that is $30.45. Uh, this is not exclusive to expedited applications. You can do this for a regular application as well, just to know that it was delivered to the U.S. Department of State overnight. And the other fee that is offered by the U.S. Department of State is an overnight return delivery fee. At this time, that fee is $21.36. It is not available for passport cards and is also not exclusive to expedited applications. So this is once the U.S. Department of State has processed your application. If you want them to overnight that passport to you, then you can uh, opt into paying the $21.36 to have them overnight it once it has been processed. Um, again, for up-to-date processing times, please visit the U.S. Department of State's website at travel.state.gov. 
and fees are subject to change, so please visit our website for the most up-to-date information regarding fees. Some available clerk contacts and available resources for you. Um, the Lee Clerk Passport page has lots of valuable information regarding passports, including this how-to video and PDF version of this presentation. The U.S. Department of State, travel.state.gov, you've heard me say that a lot, but they do have some great FAQs and all of the applications needed um, for whether you're renewing or applying for the first time or you have a special circumstance. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security, as well as the US, um, USA.gov passport information page um, has lots of information. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.